Does your Amazon online store need an inventory adjustment so you can calculate your profit each month? Well, then you should watch this video, Cost of Goods Sold Adjustment, for calculating the monthly profit for your Amazon online store. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. How do you know your monthly profit from your Amazon online store? Well, you know the money that comes in is the amount of gross sales that goes into the account that we call and Amazon calls product charges. That's the gross sales that were recorded as each sale happened and represents the sales price from the items that were sold to your customers. You must subtract what you paid for those items in order to know your gross profit. But how do you know what you paid for the specific products that were sold? Well, we know that the main calculation for finding out your profit is sales income minus what you paid for the merchandise that you gave the customer, which is cost of goods sold, equals your gross profit. And it's this middle number that we have to focus on. And we learned in a prior video that cost of goods sold is equal to beginning inventory plus purchases equals the goods available for sale. Goods available for sale minus your ending inventory equals your cost of goods sold. So when you look at these numbers, you know that your cost of goods sold is 600 because $750 of goods available for sale that you were able to sell minus $150 in ending inventory that you did not sell equals $600 which is the cost of goods sold. That's what you paid for the merchandise that went out. So how do we do this in QuickBooks? Well, if you look at the prior video, the one that we recorded the deposit from or the deposit statement, these were your accounts in the chart of accounts and it was that account product charges that represents the sales that is what represented the money that came in from the customers now we must add three additional accounts to the chart of accounts in order to be able to have QuickBooks find your cost of goods sold First, we have to put an account called Inventory Asset, and that's a current asset. And if you watched the prior video, then you know that that represents the beginning inventory of one month, which is the same as the ending inventory of the next month. Actually, it's vice versa. The ending inventory of one month, which is the beginning inventory of another month. In the left panel, click Accounting chart of accounts. Now, QuickBooks already comes with a lot of accounts. So you might already have an inventory asset on your list. If not, then click New, and the account type would be Other Current Asset, and the detail type would be Inventory. And you could leave the name. We'll type ours in capital to indicate that we typed it in. Now, save and new. The other account we have to add is a purchases account. That account will represent the total money spent on new inventory during the current month. And the type of account that it should be is cost of goods sold. Now again, QuickBooks comes with, let me show you, QuickBooks comes with 
a lot of accounts already. So you might already have an account called purchases. The problem is that the category is expense. So we have to edit the account because we don't want it to be an expense. We want it to be part of the cost of goods sold calculation. So if you already have it in your chart of accounts, just change the account type. And again, the detail type really doesn't matter. As long as it's a cost of goods sold account, it will appear in the correct place of your profit and loss. So we click Save and New. And then we click Yes. Now, the last account that we have to add is Cost of Goods Sold. That's the actual account that will show up in the income section of your profit and loss. And the type also has to be Cost of Goods Sold. And again, it's possible it's possible that you might already have it depending on your subscription. So we already have an account called Cost of Goods Sold, which is type Cost of Goods Sold. So if you don't have it, you would create it like this. You would click Account New, and it would be Cost of Goods Sold type of account. And of course, it wouldn't really matter, and you would type in Cost of Goods Sold. And after you click Save and New, we can't because we already have one. After you save it, you will then have the accounts you need to make your monthly adjustment to find your profit. Now, if you remember our example statement deposit in the prior video, that date was April 3rd of 2019. So we are imagining that our example month was April 3rd of 2019. That was shown in a prior video. But the prior deposit recorded sales, meaning the income, into an account called product charges. That was our income from sales account. Everything else that we recorded in the previous video was listed as an expense that lowered the profit on the profit and loss. We should, however, in a real situation, have had an April 1 inventory asset with a balance coming from the previous month. In other words, we were pretending that April of 2019 was the very first month that we uh, started doing uh, business with Amazon. But if it were not, then we would have had a balance in the inventory account that represented the end of March balance which is the same as the beginning of the April balance. That was, would, that's what would have been the situation if we were doing this continuously. So what we have to do in order to make this example understandable is to put in April's beginning balance. You will not do this in real life. I'm only doing this now so we can pretend that we had a balance in inventory on April 1 that came from the end of March. Because if we had a balance on April 1, we would then be able to see the full set of adjustments for the cost of goods sold calculation. And by the way, if you started your business with inventory on hand, the adjustment I'm about to show you would be the adjustment you would make to acknowledge that you had inventory on hand before you started selling on Amazon. So we are pretending that we, had, that we paid $4,000 for the beginning inventory. And this is the way you would do it. You would click New, and you'd go over to Journal Entry. Now, the date, of course, will be April 1 of 2019. And the account would be our inventory asset, okay, uh, I guess inventory, current asset. And we would debit the account for the amount that we started doing business with at the moment we started doing business. And any accountant will tell you that if you're doing a setup journal entry, which is what this is, the balancing account is opening balance equity and then we would just click 
save and close. So that's what you would do only if you had inventory on hand before you started doing business with Amazon. And now our beginning inventory is set up. In fact, let's take a look at the trial balance. You can see that inventory April 1, which is what we are pretending that we finished with for the end of March, is $4,000. And of course, opening balance equity, that's just the account we use to balance out set up adjustments. Now we're going to really pretend that we're at the end of April and we have to adjust inventory to find our cost of goods sold and our gross profit. So now let's record purchases of inventory during April. So we set up the beginning inventory for beginning of April. Then we recorded the deposit on April 3rd. Now we're recording purchases during April. So let's imagine during April, we purchased inventory twice. First, on April 9, we paid Maggie the Merchant $1,000 for inventory that we planned to sell. Well, that's very simple. We click New, Expense, and don't worry about this. And if Maggie the Merchant is not on the list, we click Add New, and we type in her name. And then we click Save. Uh, by the way, she's a vendor. We click Save. Good. Now, the date that we purchased from her is April 9th, and we choose the purchases account because that's the account that we record the purchases in. And we paid $1,000 to Maggie on April 9th for the merchandise that we intend to sell save and close and you can see purchases shows up for the first time as a thousand dollars now let's imagine on april 26th we paid maggie again for one thousand five hundred dollars more of inventory that we plan on selling on amazon so we do the same thing new expense and that was april uh, 26th so we change this to April 26th. Maggie the Merchant. Uh, just click no just in case. In other words, they would put the purchases account, but then they would put the previous money amount, which I don't think is helpful. So purchases. And this time it was 50. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. just 1500 that we purchased on April 26 save and close so it says that during the month we purchased two thousand five hundred dollars worth of merchandise that we paid twenty five hundred for that we plan on selling now before we move on to step three let's do this reports standard and let's put the good profit and loss up there this one profit and loss choose all dates and run report now you can see that the purchases is part of the income section this is what the customers gave us and this is what we paid for so the gross profit that's showing now is not accurate it only takes into consideration the purchases it doesn't yet take into consideration the difference between the beginning and ending inventory we need to do that in order to really find out our cost of goods sold and our gross profit. But in the meantime, let's click Save Customization and click Save because it's better to have that one. Now when we click Reports and Custom, this profit and loss I think is a little better for a yes. So again, the cost of goods sold section is not correct and complete until we do our final inventory adjustment. And now let's finally calculate the gross profit and net income from April by doing three journal entry adjustments. 
we will assume that no other deposits from Amazon happened in April just to make things easy and clear even though we know we would probably have one more statement to put in so we will make three journal entries and the dates of those journal entries must be dated the last day of the month first we will move beginning inventory to cost of goods sold so if we look at the trial balance we can see in this example beginning inventory is four thousand on the debit side so we will make a credit to move it out of inventory because it's no longer the amount in, in, in inventory at the end of April so we re remove all of it by making a credit and the balancing debit goes to the cost of goods sold account new journal entry you must put the date the last day of the month that you're measuring the income from the account is inventory and we are making a credit of whatever the beginning balance is to wipe it out because the beginning balance is no longer correct and the balancing debit goes into cost of goods sold then click save and new now on the same date we have to move the balance of purchases to cost of goods sold in the exact same way if we look at the trial balance now purchases is 2500 and it's on the debit side so we have to wipe it out and make it zero so that it can start fresh measuring the purchases for only May so we have to credit purchases to wipe out the debit balance we click new journal entry QuickBooks remembers April 30th purchases and we will make a credit to wipe it out purchases must start with zero at the beginning of the month so that when you look at purchases you know how much was purchased during one specific month and the balancing debit goes to cost of goods sold and save and new now in order to do the third one you would have to physically count the ending inventory at the end of April let's imagine you physically count your inventory as of April 30 and determine that you have you paid three thousand dollars for the merchandise that is sitting there with you at exactly on April 30 well inventory right now after the first adjustment has a zero balance because we wiped it out so we have to put this three thousand into inventory because that's how much we have at the end so we're going to debit inventory and credit cost of goods sold April 30 inventory is debit for what we physically have and the balancing credit is cost of goods sold now when we click save and close we can come back to the profit and loss and you can see the real cost of goods sold was three thousand five hundred dollars so thirteen thousand six hundred fifty nine twenty two is what customers gave us for merchandise that we paid thirty five hundred dollars for and those three journal entries helped us find out that we actually paid thirty five hundred dollars for the merchandise they gave us thirteen six fifty nine for that means our real gross profit is ten thousand one fifty nine and when we subtract out all the other expenses our net income at the end of the month is five thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and fifty two cents